Love Podcast oh does is the party show podcast, ladies and gentlemen! Woo! That was outrageous. <laughs> There was a pause after I did you that. You can't be you can't be talking or engaging in normal conversation with me and then start screaming. We had to readjust. But that's <laughs> but that's my base instinct that I always want to do whenever I'm talking to you. Wow. <laughs> Listeners, audience, you've just witnessed an HR <laughs> incident in real time. What happened there is my internal screaming. No <laughs> I'm joking. Welcome to no, Internal Comms Podcast. No, I'm joking. That's just very fragile at the moment, aren't I? You know. Wait till you hear what Ollie has to say about that later on. <laughs> uh, shall I? I'll turn my eye on Ed. Shall I for the next? If you could. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> I feel terrible. Yeah, you should. That was dreadful. <laughs> no, nah, come on. It wasn't that bad. Um, I, I personally wouldn't have said it, but nice hoodie. Mm. Ollie Thugmore. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Do you think when people hear you do, saying things like that, that they think your white knighting is genuine? As in, I think it's actually... Like, you know, you as like respecter, the respecter of everyone. But the woman respecter. Well, and <laughs> everyone else. And people of all creeds and colours, mm. shapes and sizes. I'm a friend to all. And I think all my friends realise that my friendship is true. And I will die for them. Yeah? Yep. Any cause, regardless. <laughs> it's just who gets to me first. What's the what's the? It's least, more mercenary than anything. What's the least that could happen that you would die for someone over? If someone was um, <laughs> disrespected at work, Queen. <laughs> <laughs> if someone wasn't allowed to bring their anime body pillow in to work, I would fight their corner. I'd be there. Um, you know, in HR stuff, you can have like a little witness, I guess, someone to argue your case for you if wow. you're not a union. You are so brave. I'd I would be the muscle. I'd be pro anime body pillows at work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you guys be on? Probably not that. Really? <laughs> on reflection, I think <laughs> I might not be on that as well. I think I'm quite mouthy, so I think I, I don't need to. Why would you raise your eyebrows? Because that was a funny thing to say. Well, mouthy. Yeah. Why? What do you think it means? Like gobby. Like... Yeah, I think I am quite gobby. I'm di I disagree. But I we think nearly a... got into a fight at the pub the other night. Because... You and I? <laughs> no. All oh, right. I was like, I don't think we did. <laughs> you, so... were do you were doing that thing where you don't come and hang out with us. You guys don't hang out that much, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys hang out once in three months. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Ollie doesn't come. Ollie has to go to the small holding. Mm. I have to tend to my exo bully farm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to really generate an income before the band comes into place. Did you read in the Telegraph this morning that some XL bully owners are confused about whether they actually own XL bullies or not? What is it? Is it because it's an un... Feels like a front, doesn't it? Mm. It's, an, it's an undefined breed. As in some people just have... You get a mongrel and someone says this is an XL bully and because it's a not defined thing... And it's also been buried in like a back garden and you don't know who the parents are because no, there's no like tracing. It could be anything. And it's just a big dog, essentially. So I think ex I think it's quite important to distinguish whether or not you actually do have well, so, so one of the, you put a diet. One of the parameters was the neck. Do you know how wide a neck has to be to be an XL no, bully? No, it's done on girth. It's, it's done on girth. 20 inches. That's insane. Yeah. Maybe. That's more than like a man's collar size. Speak for yourself. <laughs> what fucking fourteen inches right there? I've I've seen your school shirts. <laughs> That's my waist. If I didn't have to work, and I could actually look after myself. What is that? I don't think that would mean you were looking after yourself. <laughs> if your waist was fourteen. If I could inches. live out my ultimate dream of just being heroin chic, or just being a Victorian like wastrel. This is like my mortal enemy. You know, my mortal enemy. We won't name her, but my mortal enemy. Yeah. Yes. Who gets to dabble in journalism while they're so like <laughs> doing like seven, fuck all. Seven Pilates classes a day. It really upsets me every mm. time I go on there. You know, she's dyed her hair brown now. You're, it's getting closer she's, to people being able to figure out who it is. No, no, it's not. She's she's all over me. It, like, honestly, I'm actually claustrophobic with it. Like, calm down. <laughs> How do you feel about it? Anyway? <laughs> It's fucking on site, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. That's going to be much more diplomatic than that. Streets lock off in them. <laughs> she don't want this smoke, bro. Why have I got my hood up? 
<laughs> it's on fucking sight. You got your. Hood. You talk a big you've got, game. You've got you your. Talk, hood, sorry, no, you've got your. No, up no, you talk a big game. You talk a, a big game. I respect women. Yada yada. Well, when it comes when it comes <laughs> down to it, when it comes down to it, yeah. So you will you jump someone? <laughs> no. It's one of those things as well with like um can cancelable jokes, right? Because if you repeat any joke oftentimes enough, or you you micro analyze it, you go no. Now this is the setup. And then the punchline is this, and that's funny because you've, it's already not funny. It's no longer funny, at which point you're just kind of being micro-analyzing about whether or not you have went too far in offending good taste. Mm -hmm. you've, already, you've lost that argument again. You know, if, you, if you enter into the discussion of it, it's, it's game over for you. That's one of my tactics for getting out of cancellation. Don't you, engage. You and LBC. Yeah. <laughs> slurs. All of the racial <laughs> slurs I keep repeating on LBC. You've got, you have to dump so much of your LBC show, it's actually 20 minutes long. That reminds me about how you and Finn Taylor haven't come out yet. I think what we're going to do in this podcast is we've got to keep drip feeding what went on during that record and so that he is pushed into releasing it. Yeah. Or But, but then you create enough hype. It's actually, I think it's a disincentive to release it because say we drive hype to it, it's released in 10 weeks and that's, it's going to be far more people waiting for that big bump. Big bump? Uh, yeah. Big bump, great for analytics. Big what? Big bump. Big he bump. He loves a big bump. Do you? Mm. I'm talking about big bump. You don't like big he bumps? He likes big bumps as well. Pregnant women bang into it. <laughs> you like pregnant women? <laughs> Is that like, yeah? No. Really? No, no. he hates them. Back in the hand. Damn it. I was trying to get into the glorious topic of uh, YouTube analytics and the algorithm, he which is... is much more interesting <laughs> than any. <laughs> Ed is the Ed is the purest like sort of personification of the pregnancy fetish, and that he he, <laughs> the fuck? he obsesses over he obsesses over the big bump, but hates the woman that the big bump is attached to. Is that not just like pro life people? I think that's their entire philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> They're really pro the bump, hate the woman. <laughs> That could be their campaign. Oh, do you hate women? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to do it? But you think they're sexy when they're pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Come and join me and pick it outside of this <laughs> abortion clinic. We're praying. <laughs> I don't know if I want to trail too much of the Finn versus the internet stuff because I'm still no. hoping to. If I, if because they, they're very kindly like, we'll show you the edit mm -hmm. beforehand. If there's anything you know you really don't want to be in there, we can talk about it not not being in there. Where's and some of the stuff is pretty is really bad. So <laughs> I want to I want to retain the right to possibly be able to veto. Yeah, I, I think as a without trailing it in this as a consumer, I would want to watch it blind. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, do you think we can get the uncut? No, <laughs> I reckon I could. Yeah, well, I'll ask him for it. <laughs> I would also ask. For, I'll also ask for it. I don't know. Him. I never met him, but just on the elf chance, he's going to send me a Dropbox link. <laughs> when I did meet him, I had to really control myself because I wanted to say, "What's well, we find you really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't really like you. You're a funny guy. <laughs> but instead, I was like, oh, we uh, we, we enjoy your jokes uh, sometimes around around the office. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a funny guy. It's good skits, though, yeah. <laughs> it's good skits. His Wes Anderson nonce hunter was really good. I don't think I've seen that. He did like a day in the life of a nonce hunter if it was a Wes Anderson <laughs> yeah. film. Yeah. That's sick. That's really good. That's really good. Um, he told um, he told some unbelievable jokes on the one I watched this morning. I haven't. Is that the latest one, Finn versus the Internet? With, yeah, it was. Yeah. Is it that Catherine Mills woman? No. What was Haley something? Yes, Haley Mills. Maybe she, she does like Haley Mills. Was, she's not a child actor from like the sixties. Oh, I don't know. This, love that, this, wouldn't you? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice how he's tone policing you as well? He asked what? you to leave your behaviour back there. He did, didn't he? He did, 100% yeah. he did, yeah. Then he called me hysterical. Maybe he could kick the shit out of me. <laughs> so I wouldn't dare. I actually think that's true. <laughs> no, I'm a very gentle woman. Yeah, but when... You've got the baby <laughs> also like, so much taller than me. You've got the height on him. You've got the reach. I think you've got the reach on him. <laughs> yeah, I, I reckon on, so. I mean, I've got a really long wing, wingspan. Pick him off. Wingspan. You know, honestly, you should see me like at Stick home. If, if, I, if I'm going to get something out of a cupboard, I don't even have to get up. <laughs> Her arm extends. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy the Reach. Yeah. Um, Ava Santina. Flavor Mantina. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Do you know who I saw as a pantomime dame on Sunday? You won't guess, but it's great. <laughs> Duke from Tracy Beaker was a pantomime dame at the Hackney Empire. Wow. Isn't that sick? That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's really good. We'd recommend. 
Oh, that's what I wanted to tell people. Ed Campbell is a huge Potterhead. Fuck off. <laughs> is he actually? Yeah. On. <laughs> You've kept that quiet. <laughs> Well, you, also, I'm I'm going to say my extent of how much I like Harry Potter before you do anything fucking before he ever lies about it. <laughs> to what extent do you like Harry Potter? I have read all the books multiple times and seen all the films. How many times is multiple times? L- or, or it, it, since I reckon each book probably like. So I would say that they say I finished them when I was twelve. I would have read all of them four or five times. And and how much do you hate trans people? <laughs> <laughs> There's an inverse correlation. No, your, your love of J.K. Rowling. No, so my inverse correlation between <laughs> my agreement with J.K. Rowling's sentiment for <coughs> trans people and how much I like Harry Potter. So you can separate the art from the artist. Is what I think. Is I think I, that's that's. I think you should separate the art from the artist. Yeah, free R. Kelly. <laughs> That's that's the opposite of the lesson, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's a separate point. He did nothing wrong and his music's great. <laughs> yeah. Um do you go to um King's Cross on that day no. and like point a wand at oh, the wall the... of the train station? <laughs> what do you mean the first of September? Do I? Yeah, you do. It's the point never goes off. I think that's true. You go you go to like, what is it? Like you go to platform two or something and wait. Shut the fuck up. You well, know yeah. that. What that platform? is so, you're being <laughs> you know exactly what it is. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, that is like, I don't. Do you know anything about Harry Potter? Do you wear a cloak? No. This is kind of like a cloak. Isn't no, it's it? not it's a blue fucking shirt. What? You're wearing a fucking cloak. What house would you be in? Um <laughs> I've got my invisibly cloaked on, <laughs> invisibly cloak on, and now Ed Campbell can't see me. Do you know what you're doing? Is when you know when like self-described like nerds on the internet pretend that it's like very interesting. They like Star Wars and Harry Potter. You can't see that I'm doing this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> like they're the most. They're the big- <laughs> Wait, a hand just appeared and called me a wanker. <laughs> it was me. What's your favorite spell? Um, <laughs> Accio, let's say. What's that? It's when you want to like. Res- it's the summoning spell. Ooh, what would you summon? I don't know. Like, I could if I wanted your coat can, I could say Accio. It, it, it didn't. It didn't work. <laughs> Just keep that over here. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't think Harry Potter's real, I don't think I'm a wizard. What, oh it? my god! Sorry. No, go. I used to call you like Wizard Boy, right? Yeah. Because you would be reading fantasy novels all the time. Yes, I like fantasy novels. Wizard Boy. <laughs> but that was actually real. Like, yeah, I like fantasy books. Yeah, but I was obviously hamming it up to take the piss <laughs> out of you. But uh, actually, it was on on brand. Oh well, yeah, because you saw me reading fantasy books. Yeah, but th- no, but no, no, no. But like uh, you know, being into a bit of I don't know, fucking Philip Pullman or something every now and then, get, getting a bit of Neil Gaiman on when we're on the train to like Peterborough or some shit. That's uh-huh. fine. Reading Harry Potter ten times, that's sus behaviour. Yeah, I don't think it is. I'd say it's sus, what? man. I think it's quite. A, I think lots of people do it. <laughs> there are dozens of us. How many of them are over eighteen? And I bet you know very the few of them. I read them when I was a child. Ten times as a kid, probably. I used to like. When did you stop reading Harry Potter? I don't know. When was the last time you never stopped? When was the last time you went outside to play? <laughs> don't touch grass, me. <laughs> I'm a podcast host. <laughs> I've never touched grass. I hate grass. Um, yeah. So Ava's point is, I like Harry Potter, and yes, I do. What was the tweet that you told oh, me I categorically couldn't tweet? Oh, so it was really good. It was like it was a lie. It was a lie. <laughs> it was a lie again. Are we going to do Starmer and Thatcher? Because oh. we're about half an hour in. Oh, well, in many we're, ways, we're they're like Harry it. Potter and Voldemort, I'd say. <laughs> yeah? I'd really appreciate if all of your analysis was done <laughs> <Should I> try <laughs> via Harry Potter I'll, I'll see how deep allegory. The, I'll, see, I'll see how deep in the lore I can get. You have a little think. Yeah. I'll tee it up with Ava and then we'll come to you for a Harry Potter analysis. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay, cool. Ava, this weekend, um, Keir Starmer wrote something in the Sunday Telegraph, which has got quite a lot of people's backs up, hasn't it? I wasn't listening. I was honestly thinking about what Harry Potter character I think that... Are you into Harry Potter as well? No, not like that. Mm. What do you mean not like that? What? Uh, <laughs> do you, do you, do you, do you, you will come to you in a minute, okay? So Keir Starmer wrote in the Sunday Telegraph this weekend, Ava. Um, well, lauding Margaret Thatcher. 
yeah. as an entrepreneurial, uh, her spirit of entrepreneurialism, amongst other things. What do you think's going on there? Why has that happened? Well, can we also just can we just be really fair to Keir Starmer? Because a lot of people have now explained to me that I was too harsh on him. And so when he wrote that Margaret Thatcher really, you know, could seize the entrepreneurship and, you know, Britain is not agile, he didn't actually mean that. What he meant was was like he just well, he didn't mean that. Um <laughs> But when he did say that, I originally thought that that's what he meant. Mm. But he didn't mean that. Okay. So this is just, he's just lying again. Well, he didn't, he probably didn't even write that piece, you know? Oh, oh, it's gaslighting. Yeah. Should we go to Ed Campbell? Is that a good time to go to Ed Campbell? No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Look, I think. Can we actually just read it out? Yeah, go on. Has he put it? Yeah, it's second par. No, no, no. That's not about, that's not about Thatcher. He wrote, across Britain, there are people who feel disillusioned, frustrated, angry, worried. Many of them have always voted Conservative, but feel that their party has left them. But I also understand that many will be uncertain about Labour. I ask them to look at us again. Mm -hmm. And he praised Thatcher for effecting meaningful change and setting loose our natural entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Which I think is best seen in places like Darlington. Okay. um, Liverpool as well. So so I think... Pitts. Pitts. Well, no, she closed them, Ed. That was part of her entrepreneurial spirit. He, he doesn't. Sorry, I've, I've actually, he doesn't know about the, sorry. the politics of this country because <laughs> he's, he's like, too busy reading Harry Potter books. <laughs> Wait, so who was minister Which for magic at this point? Is meant to be the minor. <laughs> they are actually set in like the late early nineties, Harry Potter books. So that should probably looms large in the Harry Potter universe. You know, the Ministry of Magic. It's yeah. like, like you know, it's it's like the Ministry for Defence. <laughs> Okay. The Ministry of okay, Just, for Justice. Are you doing that re- a, the revisionist thing where she's like, actually, you know, this character was fluid in was, there. Was gay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, yeah actually, yeah. I don't think she does that anymore because I think she's no, she's I think, anti that. But yeah, I, th- I think that's what I'm doing. I'm white knighting for J.K. Rowling. Can I join in? Yeah, can I, please. Can, can I join in the political discussion <laughs> yeah, instead of this like can. weird box? You put <laughs> so anyway, so Starmer is uh, twenty points ahead in the polls, mm. but he still feels the need to court the Thatcher votes. <clears throat> and I think what happened was, I think that Starmer earnestly wrote in the Telegraph, trying to appeal to centre-right voters, forgetting that when things are published on the internet, not just Telegraph readers read them. <laughs> and so I think he thought he was... This is going to be my secret letter to the Telegraph. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope no one puts this in a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what happened. Because you know when he writes in the sun as well? Mm. And people, and people go get mad. And he goes like wild on like anti-immigration, and then like everyone else is like, "What the fuck, mate?" Like, <laughs> I think um, is there Ed? Is there not an element to this where it's like he's just he's hoovered up so much of the electorate at this point that he's now gone, Who Mr. Sunak, I'm fucking you from every angle. <laughs> I am now, I am now going to fuck you from you are not enough of a Thatcherite. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to gobble up these voters. You know, obviously there's, yeah. more, there's more to it. There's more to it than that. You know, so we're talking about sort of centrists, like grandstanding, blue wall people who might look to the Lib Dems and would now look to Labour, and he's kind of signalling his 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 okayness to them. But is there is there an aspect of this that's just you know, I will attack you from every direction? And I wonder if it's I. I think it was, was it John McTernan in the Guardian today wrote that really good article about this, saying basically saying <laughs> something no one's ever said before. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing John McTernan catching strays on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he basically was saying their, the Labour polling is so good, there's basically no swing voters left. Like these people that he's trying to appeal to, they will never, ever in a million years vote Labour. And Star was like, oh, please. Mm. Oh, please vote for me. Like, no, we're going to vote for reform. Like, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> vote for us. <laughs> and so these people, like, they, they've, they're they abandoning the Conservative Party, but they would never, ever vote Labour. So that's, I think, is, is, is maybe that constituency that he's trying to vote to. I also think part of, part of it appeal to, rather. is designed to piss off people like us. I think, oh, that's part, no. I think that's part of it as well. I think <clears> it's deliberate in its nature that if you write in a right-wing rag that you respect Margaret Thatcher or, you know, you sing sing her praises, it is as much about courting the opinion of those sort of centre-right voters as it is about provoking... People learn about who you are and what you think by not just by what you say, but also what your opponents say about you. And if you can inflame 
you know, the hosts of certain left wing podcasts or whatever, and they lose their marbles and go, what a scumbag, you know, does he not know about the minor strikes? Does he not know about the consequences on the housing market of right to buy? Does he not know about the failures of privatization in this country? You're signaling to people who, who see me saying things like that, who see you saying things like that, who see Owen Jones saying things, take your fucking pick, Ash Sarka, whoever, and they go, well, oh, well, if they're pissed off, then actually that, that kind of works for me because I'm, I'm not too sure about those guys anyway. Like it, by having that row, by provoking that criticism from the left, you're also signaling yeah. to people who traditionally don't align with the people that are upset. You go, oh, oh okay, well, maybe he's, maybe he's my guy then. Yeah, but I think, is there... The, is it people who are center right? They the people who are center right are going to vote for him anyway. Mm. Like, like that, their vote wasn't contingent on Thatcher. It's like I think I think it's the, he needs to maybe accept that he's got as much done as much as he can. He's got control over enough of the electorate to fucking, as we said last week, bend Rishi Sunak over this much box and spank his bottom. Run a train on that man. I, I won't say. I'm not going to say run a train. <laughs> Marmalize him. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> write him off. Is, but Sold then, for scrap. Is it, is it maybe time to throw throw us a bone to give us like nah. something like to praise like? No, nah. There's no one going after it, the under thirty fives, is there? No, no, one. there's not. But then that's good. because you've all been so fucking lazy for the last like hundred mm, years and not bothered to vote. With your fucking avocados. <laughs> no, no, not that. I mean, like how typically younger people don't vote. Mm. So if you hadn't been so lazy in the last couple of elections, maybe we'd be getting a few little uh, little morsels, a couple of treats. Tories could pivot to it big time. Do you think they will? No, they don't have the membership for it. They'll, they'll, they'll. I think it's electoral wipeout. Uh, this is obviously we're we're talking broad, very, very, very broad strokes. Electoral wipeout reinvents itself either in the image of the hard right uh, populist Suella Braverman nonsense, or possibly in the mould of kind of that Canadian conservative model, which is you know pro growth, pro house building. Um, there's a, there's a model there in Polivier, I believe is his, his name, isn't it? The Canadian mm -hmm. Canadian guy um, who's doing a very good job of resurrecting the Canadian centre-right from a position of relative weakness to actually becoming an electoral force again. The Tories could learn that lesson for sure. I do remember the last time we spoke about this. That is what I said. Is it? Not the Canadian thing. I said... <laughs> 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 I actually admit I know very little about Canadian politics. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah fuck all. Um, we sat here and we had a conversation in which you said, after the next election, the Conservative Party will become cultural, central, hard right. Mm. And I said, I don't think so. I think they'll become small C conservatives and I think they'll go after housing. And you said, don't be so stupid, little woman. If, if, Why am I lying. catching strays? Eva's lying. Why again. am I catching strays in the anti Ed Campbell thing? I thought you and I were allies. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, this okay. feels quite like. Do you both have one sibling each? As in the, as in that's you've got one sibling, you have one sibling. Because if you have three, I have two siblings, and much of my childhood is, is you're either ganging up on the one or being ganged up on, and this is what this is what growing up for me was like. Oh, I was like, you know, it's like it was fun because when you were in the two, God, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but being the one, not great. <laughs> really, really not great. <laughs> My sister was quite a puncher when we were growing up. Really? Yeah. She used to really land a few on me. Like if I wouldn't let her borrow something, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy actually now that I'm thinking about it. She's got a real quite punch to her. Mm. And then she'd say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she'd say sorry. And I'd be like, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Take and the then, top. Oh God. No, yeah. Are you the, you're the middle, aren't you? Or are you the oldest? I'm the oldest. You got bullied as the oldest. He's also the smallest, I think, isn't he? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you've met my brother. I have, yeah. And I have a sister. I've, I've met your sister. I've met your sister as yeah. well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you've met all my sisters. I have, yeah. yeah. yeah and they were my two... They tower over you, <laughs> intellectually and physically. <laughs> my seven foot five sister. <laughs> Came stomping into the office. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Fences upcoming ranking of newsrooms by height. Yeah, I really, really let the side down, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, but they only did men. Yeah, they did. Will you like... just let us have this one thing? You have everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should, like, rank shagability. Maybe you could do that. You We'd lose sense. again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure editorially we could do that. What would you do, shoe size? Shoe size, that's kind of height related, isn't it? 
hand. Oh, grip strength. <laughs> grip strength would be funny. <laughs> That's quite good, no? Mm. Just go and know the officers. Do you think that you've got... Do you think you could control an XL bully? That's how they measure the grip strength. Oh, my God. You have to be able to... There's a toddler at one end of the room <laughs> <laughs> covered in jam. <laughs> the XL bully. No, bacon. Is... It's wrapped in bacon. <laughs> it's a pig in a blanket. Oh. It's a human pig in blanket. <laughs> and the XL bully Hasn't is hungry. Days. Yeah. And you are wee man from the independent. <laughs> you've got... 30 seconds he's being dragged along on his heels Ava and I were walking for a coffee the other day and we watched a man being dragged down Exeter Market by an XL bully really? yeah yeah. it wasn't God. It wasn't a big one either it was, no. it was like a juvenile wasn't it it wasn't fully grown it was fucking pulling him all over the shop God yeah, yeah. and he was talking to it and the dog was not responding <laughs> shut the fuck up yeah. <laughs> I, I'm the charging. apex predator here <laughs> <laughs> I mean when we get home I eat your child <laughs> What do you think the Harry Potter uh, allegory for uh, Keir Starmer and Thatcher is? Um, is it... <laughs> in my head I'm debating about, like, do I go full, full send and have you all laugh at me? Or do I... Obviously that's what you do. Or do I unsatisfying? Um, is it something like when... Oh, it's pretty shit. I think there's no natural comparison. Take his piece of paper. I've not written anything about it on a piece of paper. When Voldemort comes back and the Ministry don't believe it, and they're like burying their head in the sand, is that something? Who's Voldemort here? Thatcher, I think. So Thatcher came back, and should, and should he no, not, it doesn't work. Should it, it not be work. like Harry paying tribute to someone in the past that everyone actually hates? Oh, sorry, I was looking for. I was thinking of an act, like something that actually happened in the books as opposed right. to like making one up I could make one up I've got a really good one go <laughs> Keir Starmer is Dumbledore because Dumbledore turns and he's like Harry Potter was always going to die and whoa, everyone whoa, and whoa, whoa. What's, th what's this <laughs> are we doing spoilers you, you know who Dumbledore <laughs> I don't think you can spoil a book that's been out for 10 years I'm is Dumbledore a bad guy no yeah he is have you not read the books I stopped reading after four mate once you realise the plot is exactly the same in all of them, you Not stop true. reading them like most adults. <laughs> Not, true. <laughs> Not true. Harry's having a terrible time with the muggles. He goes off to Hogwarts. <laughs> he gets really happy. Don't <laughs> Voldemort starts to appear again. Oh, bad times, bad times. There'll be a showdown towards the end of the book. Someone may die, but it won't reach a final conclusion. Then he goes back to the muggles. End of. Is that why book, you started book reading, repeats again? Is that why you read so much Roger Scruton when you were a child? <laughs> <laughs> I much preferred England and Elegy. Uh -huh. You could, there's nothing wrong with reading, reading something light. Harry Potter is the last Horcrux, right? Yeah. And Dumbledore knows that. Yes. What? So. See, this is why you keep reading after five seconds. But seven Dumbledore years. fooled us the entire time because we thought Dumbledore was the good guy. He's the good guy, though. And it turns out Snape's the good guy. No, they're both good guys. Doesn't Snape throw Dumbledore down that thing? He kills him, like, with a spell. He doesn't throw, he <laughs> doesn't physically what throw. What spell does he use? A Cadabra, the killing curse. Whoa. What? <laughs> did he just say that? Yeah, I think he did. I don't think you're allowed to say that in public, <laughs> are you? You put a killing curse on our female colleague. <laughs> no, I didn't. Because I didn't. Well, one, because magic is not real. <laughs> Sorry, that's my main argument. I'm not real? The ma no! <laughs> <laughs> you know there's like, this is being recorded. <laughs> People heard me not say that. I've lost all ability of speech. You know, earlier on in the episode when we were like, once you enter into the marketplace of uh -huh. ideas where you're debating like what you did and didn't say, you've already lost. Yes. I feel like that's where you are well, right now. I can't believe, you're arguing with books you've not even fucking read. <laughs> because they were so bad. No, they're not, they were good. I say, <laughs> the greatest debate of all time. <laughs> Locked after a thousand posts. How many have you read? I think all of them. What's a I Horcrux? Think. It's, it's so you want you're a wizard. See, really most, God damn right I am. See, really, sorry, sorry, sorry. Continue. So you're an evil wizard. You are concerned about death. You want the cheap death. So you kill someone, and the act of killing is so evil is sufficient to split a part of your soul and bury it in an object. So that when you die, you live on and can be reanimated from what from your um Horcrux. It's like when Walt Disney froze himself when he died. Mm. So, but then the po point of Voldemort is Vo Voldemort had seven Horcruxes, 
which is like more than anyone else had. That's how evil he was. And Harry, it turns out, is a Horcrux in the last book. So that's why he can like, he has many similar powers to Voldemort. But they've got to destroy him. So the final book is them trying to destroy all the Horcruxes. Which but you know what's mad? What the big so hole they, in that is? Is that surely Tom Riddle would have told him about that in the second book? Like that. Tom, Tom Riddle didn't. That Tom Riddle didn't know. He didn't know. So like that was like a was like seventeen year old Tom Riddle. That Tom Riddle didn't know. Who so was Tom, Tom Riddle, Voldemort. Right. See for like the people who've seen the books and excuse me, they've seen the covers of the books, <laughs> it, seen the films and watched the books. They'll be like, this is the most. This is the most fucking basic shit. Yeah, well, why don't you hang out with those friends next time? Well, most people. <laughs> the wildly popular Harry Potter franchise. Should we talk about another wizard that's been in the news? Yeah, good segue. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> <laughs> so that made me think of, people used to talk about Magic Grandpa. Corbyn as Dumbledore, didn't, didn't they? I think they would call him like Magic, Magic Grandpa. Maybe you they? called him Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Albert! <laughs> Great to see you again! <laughs> Never said that. <laughs> okay, so should we explain what's been going on? Going on in wizard news with the other wizard. Yeah, there is a new series of Doctor Who. Mm. I'm normally out on a Saturday night, so I haven't been able to catch it yet. Do you enjoy Doctor Who? Actually, don't. I would have thought that this would have set him off because right. I thought no. it would be like he's not actually a wizard or something. He also isn't a wizard. I will say that. <laughs> that did annoy me. He's an okay. alien. There we go. So, so anyway, difference. so this wizard, <laughs> um, there's a new series about him and... <laughs> <laughs> That's such a funny way to Reality. describe Doctor Who. Reality. <laughs> there's a new series it's about like him. It's a fly on the wall documentary. <laughs> it's about him. What's Doctor Who about? It's about him. His kitchen is deceptively large. Once from the outside, it doesn't look very big. Once you get inside, it's massive. Catherine Tate's in it. Yes. That's what's important. Anyway, so this wizard you didn't used to be David. It's now played by David, David Tennant, but it's also been played by a female actress at some point as well. This, <laughs> this, this wizard's like gender like switching or something. Uh -huh. Anyway, over the weekend, this, this episode came out where David Tennant looks at another wizard and says, <laughs> he's so hot or he was so hot. And it's really, really upset people because the, the wizard can't be gay. That's it's, revisionism. So the wizard you're talking about, by the way, is Isaac Newton. <laughs> what? Is Isaac Newton. Right. Not a wizard. Legitimately Another a wizard. wizard no. Real guy. He invented gravity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think Isaac Newton is as close to a wizard as you can get in real life. Genuinely. Isaac Newton. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was banging into his alchemy as well. Was he? He was a, a mathematician, an alchemist, a poet. You'd love Harry Potter. They talk about this all the time. What? Alchemy. No. <sighs> have you ever taken anyone on a date to the alchemist? No, I don't know where the alchemist is. Oh. We used to work opposite I don't one. know what dating is. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Married life not going well. <laughs> um, Never taken her out in <laughs> 12 years or whatever it's been. The, no, uh, she can just go home and make my supper. Uh, I'm going to stay out here. Yeah. I cook mostly. That's good. Um, there's also there was also a scene where he engaged with something called the Meep. Is this when Isaac and Newton was mixed race or something? No. Um, well, possibly. I don't know if that's what was going on. I haven't seen the show either, but I've seen this clip where there's there's a CGI alien called the Meep, and Tennant uses the wrong pronouns or something, and the Meep says, "No, my pronouns are the past participle. You should call me the Meep at all times. It's not he or she or something." That also sent like GB News Twitter into a fit of rage, properly bored their piss. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're all just openly admitting you're at home on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> getting, getting angry about Doctor Who. That's part one of it. Mm. Part two is the, the f part you very effectively satirised by <laughs> describing the wizards. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just a nonsense. It's just fucking nonsense. There, there, that was a, there was a good bit. Uh, Donald Glover played... Land Donald Glover's a Doctor Who. No, excuse me, sorry. Oh, he's in, he played Lando. That was nearly Lando that nearly made me so interested enough to watch it. Lando Castellarian, Castellarian in Caridian. Thank you, Sean. Are you a fucking wizard? Star Wars. Star Wars. So, uh, so, sorry, so he played sorry. in like the um, spinoff. No, what, in the, the Han Solo spinoff, he played Lando, and 
I don't, I don't know if he explicitly says it but in the film or what Donald Glover says. Oh, yeah, I think Lando's like fully pansexual. Have you seen the freaky aliens that are Star Wars? There's no way he's not shagging them. So if you're like in a world where all these different species exist, you're, surely your sexuality goes far beyond like just the binary human. That was always a big question about Tarzan, wasn't I it? I didn't know you were so horny, man. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> Can I say something without being undermined in this episode? Okay, so so there That's was... That's a good point. Yes, but you just... But, so th thank you, say that. <laughs> Don't be like, oh, you've got a fucking hard on. That is actually... That would have been a Have you? Thing to say. No! Do you want to hold hands? I'm sorry. No, I don't want to hold hands. Um, so there was a commentator um, who said that this was a big threat to his he heterosexuality. <laughs> what, <laughs> him personally? Do you want the quote? The existence of what, like, queer Doctor Who? There's, a, there's an episode in Rick and Morty, isn't there, where Rick, like, goes and fucks a planet for, like, three days. <laughs> the, the planet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, pl the planet is like a, it's like a hive mind, the, the planet and its population. So he goes and has an orgy with Jesus Christ. the entire planet. Do you, are, you, are you ready? Yep. Why do you care? It's just acting. That's in quotes. I care because the agenda behind this is not benign. I care when a core part of my childhood is hijacked as a vehicle to denigrate me because I am a heterosexual white male. <laughs> <laughs> what is? Fellas, is it gay to fancy a wizard? I don't know. His point there about like there is an agenda behind this. Russell Davis, the showrunner, did say he's trying to make a point to like kids about like you can be accepting, like other people exist. There these people with these lived experiences, which are different from your own, and maybe people around you, and it's important or good to accept them and let people live how they live. Do you that, is, that is something that is trying to achieve. It's just how you interpret that. Do you take that as an evil? attack on your homosexual excuse me on your heterosexuality because you've hit your head really hard or do you just take it as like let people live is it even yeah. is it even like trying to achieve anything or is that actually just what the world that we live in or the country that we live in like is it is it trying to achieve something by have someone by, by having someone with pronouns or think, whatever alien it is, is. or oh, no no but and also or having like a gay character because that is that is you know your classroom. You probably you know. Yeah. You're going to be around someone who is gay. But but I think also it's well, a like, pretty normal part of your life. Ross, but like Russell Davis does try and do like a lot of LGBT representation. He did. It's a sin. That yeah, was exactly. One of my so like, I think I think if, so it, good, wasn't it? So good. Just, I think if he's, it's good to acknowledge that he is he himself is trying to put that forward. Mm. But I would make an argument that he's he's just writing his experience. He's yeah. just he's just writing what the world looks like. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree, I agree with that. But he's whereas this this lot are talking about. A world that does not exist, like a world where man, woman, yeah, all white, yeah, it just doesn't exist. No like sex. That. You know, it's about time. Actually, it's about that time of year that we have that debate over whether Jesus was white or not. Should we have? Should we have that? <laughs> 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 yeah. What's this? This is another tweet. Doctor Who is now gay, and <laughs> is suddenly mixed. Race. I'll tell the children. <laughs> Alongside pronouns and trans characters, the Doctor Who production team seems to be running the defund the BBC campaign for us. Do they understand that like Doctor Who is is allegedly a time lord who? No, he's just a man. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good British man. He may be a time traveling amorphous blob, but he is certainly not gay. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a gay man. <laughs> I think it's well well beyond the realm of possibility that that man is gay. How old is Doctor Who? Like thousands of years old. Oh, mad spunk. Like it must be mad. Oh, it must be like dust. That is, that what is. spell? What spell does he say? <laughs> As he fires dust. He says, "I'm tired. I'd I need to sit down." <laughs> you go on top for a bit. <laughs> the meep can go on top for a bit. <laughs> Why is the meep here? <laughs> the what, meep. Are you, what are you doing with a meep? <laughs> I love the like furry Yoda <laughs> omnipresent being. <laughs> Omniscient being, omnipresent being. <laughs> Darren Grimes has no problem with that. <laughs> no. That doesn't stretch the realms of his belief. But the idea that there may be a gay man on the show. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's also as well... 
Same. Do you think the meep throws it back? <laughs> what is it? Is the meep like a baby Yoda thing? I'll pull up the meep. Okay. I think also as well. Type the meep nudes into Google. I wonder what I'll get. <laughs> some really horrible AI, AI stuff. Some AI porn. Let's go. Um, also, as well, saying if Doctor Who said, one of the complaints is Doctor Who said Isaac Newton was hot. So we didn't even like, did he kiss him? Well, it, it's blurred. So maybe there are nudes. Meep nudes. I don't. I think... type meep nudes. No, into I don't Google. think they did. Do, they do kiss because I was. Talking... Is it just? Is this an observation? Is it just like he's attractive? Because that's. I think. Yeah, I think he just says he was are you so that? hot. That is the meep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me see the meep. Quite... Tell me what that thing do. Is that <laughs> the meep? That's the meep. I thought the meep would have been more like kind of slug like. They'll have some slugs for you. If that's more your thing. It's a bit noncy to want to sleep with the meep, isn't it? Well, that's why I keep telling Doctor Who when. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I see him. He does look like he's horny for it there, doesn't he? He looks like he's... He, yeah, this he, isn't their first time meeting. He looks it? like the meep has walked past and he's like leaning round a corner to check out the meep whilst it's swaggering by. Yeah. Would you? The meep? 100, yeah. 100, yeah. Mm. Run a train on that furry little <laughs> fucker. obsession with group sex? <laughs> insane me yeah why is it group sex that's it's just me and the meat that's what running a train is <laughs> running a train is like like a, a lot of people one after the other having sex with someone no, yeah I'm not sure yeah about but that. i am the train je suis la train <laughs> you, i didn't think that you was various disguises <laughs> <laughs> you regenerating after each one sabes uh, el, el renfe henfe henfe yeah train is that train in spanish it's the train company isn't it renfe I don't know. El tren. Right, don't try and train nonce me. Me corriendo el tren. It is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know enough Spanish. What did you say? Me corriendo el tren. Okay. Running a train. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know if that, is that, is that what that means? Running run a train. It's like, yeah, it's like. Multiple dudes. Yeah, yeah. What if I, <laughs> what if I have so much energy, yeah. like the large particle hadron collider, right. that I am the train? But I think that's the like thing. I am the heavy rain. I think you were just behaving like a train. I think don't think you're running a train on that. I think trains imply like multiple. I carriages. didn't think I didn't think that's what it meant at all. It is what it means. I'll go to, I'll go to Urban Dictionary whilst it you makes, two hash this out. A lot more sense than what I thought it was. Yeah, that's why objectives when all he was insisting that Keir Summer was gonna run and train and Richard Sunak. Jesus Christ. I just spat everywhere. everywhere. Oh that was I'm sorry. Vile. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. What do I do with it? Wipe, wipe it on me. Thank you. Sorry. You sh sorry, you made me laugh as I was about to say something. My tongue was like right in the front of my <laughs> mouth and so then I just spat, spit everywhere. I don't know if that Diet Coke's safe now. Probably not. Wow. What? Yeah. He's right. Yeah. Sorry, you want to do, do, do you want me to read it out? Yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, it's very... When three or more males take turns having sex with one female... Example, yo, Jason, Sam, I got this little chicken head who's going to let us run a train on her. That sounds like the meep, doesn't it? The meep speaks in that voice, no, apparently. It's the chicken head. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Doctor Who, Isaac Newton, and Catherine Tate all running a train on the meep. You know our, our, <laughs> our friend, the next colleague, Ted Milligan? Yeah. Very good comedian. He recently said he was excited for a new Doctor Who, and someone went... That's a programme for children. And Ted went, that's a stupid opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a really good encapsulation of a debate about Doctor Who. Um, no, I was having all of it explained by um, a guy called David. David Tennant? No. There's other Davids who like the Doctor Who. Um, <sighs> yeah, because I said, you're telling me the wizard was a woman and they're angry about a kiss. And they said, oh, no kissing. There was no kissing. He just said he was hot. So there's no kissing. So it's like the least gay thing. Have you ever said that another man is hot? Yes. I yeah. think you, actually you definitely have. We've sat, we've sat in the office before and I've said, what do you reckon? I said Jonathan Gullis was hot earlier. You did? Yeah, you said, you said, you said Gullis looked very handsome. And he did. Yeah, you did. Oh, no. Paul's your podcast. It's gay now. <laughs> <laughs> Darren Grimes tweeting we can't even have the politics <laughs> joke podcast anymore <laughs> this is a they've all gone gay final bits of housekeeping um, the 100th episode is later this week yes um, yes we're gonna fuck it we're gonna fuck it up big time aren't we yeah 
Are you going to say that? Let's, you can I wish we'd done. <laughs> I'm not going to say that because I don't know what that means. If we've done some politics today, then you know we've, we've done a bit of politics. Fruit. We've done hardly any politics. We've done yeah. some culture war. We haven't even talked about how Keir Starmer isn't going to turn the taps on anymore. He's going to. Well, that will save that for. Torsten Bell did actually suggest he might come in and do an interview on that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, because it's a Resolution Foundation event, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, sick. So for the 100th episode, we'll do a lock-in. Yep. We'll get the co-op's finest whiskey. You might get a bottle of Belvedere. Yeah, if the budget stretches, that's what I'm after. Oofed. What do you want? Shall we all have multiple cans of case cider and really turn it into an evening? Fucking hell. No, I haven't had case cider since I was quite young. Well, no time like the present. It was like nine percent, wasn't it? That's why you. Yeah. You know, there's no legal way to sell it, as an or like lawful way. There was a complaint to, like it was like Portsmouth City Council, and someone made the observation: K cider is only sold in cans, and one can is over the amount of um, daily units of alcohol that mm. is recommended. Sorry, responsible way to sell it actually, and you can't cans open. You stick it in the fridge; it's going to go off. So you're encouraged to drink the entire can. So you're encouraged to go over the daily daily units of alcohol. Yeah, I you mean, could share it with a friend. You could. I think most people are drinking more than one can, though, aren't they? I think so. I don't think anyone's kicking back for a nice, like, relaxing after beer. Excuse me, after work case cider. After beer work. <laughs> <laughs> after beer work case cider. Yeah. <laughs> I had a long day at work today. Beer work. What will you go for then? What about some frosty jacks? Bucky. I'm not a Bucky guy. Just so we know. Um, uh, maybe we'll do case cider. Dragon soup? We could do dragon soup. What's dragon soup? You never had dragon soup? No. It's like a caffeinated case cider. It's like 13%, Ooh, no. 14%. No, oh, it's no, like, no, a, it's no, like no. a four loco. Yeah. It's very similar. Oh, white claw. I like white claw. That's like a different. I, I really can't stand people what? buying white claws. It really, I don't know why it annoys me so much. Why? I, I guess because I hate women. Like, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's like, I don't know, we've been having a conversation about skydiving and you then coming in saying, like, I like solitaire. Do you know what I mean? What, because you're drinking... No, we're talking about dragon soup, K-Cider, Buckfast, and you're like, what about a nice hard seltzer? Yeah, because I don't really want to drink dragon soup for three hours. I want to drink white claw for three hours. I had a great day at a festival drinking white claw. Yeah, I bet you were really hydrated. I was so hydrated, a bit of a hangover. I'm a big fan of vodka squash, which is like... Mm. You know, that's good. Idea. It's not very couth. Classic uni pre drinks one that, and also really good for festivals because you yeah, don't have to carry squashka, yeah, because you don't have to carry the mixer. Yeah, you just bring the double concentrate and then you fill it up at a water point. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Really good. And it's it, you're hydrating all day. Well, kind of. You are really giveth and taketh away. It's better than drinking beer, isn't it? Yeah. So, in that hundredth episode that, in which we're gonna have a few beers, we'll also do a Q and A. And you can submit questions for that Q and A, either on Spotify. If you're listening on Spotify, you can stick them in the actual. There's a Q and A segment, right? Literally, you can stick a question in there. We'll try and answer it in the comment section on Reddit. Yeah, uh, and the comment section of YouTube. Yeah, those are three places you can. Send. I think the comment section of YouTube is way too complicated. If you do, if you put it on YouTube, the chances are we probably won't see it because there's quite a lot of comments. Or if you or if you see one yourself, like it, so come to the top. Mm. Or just put it on the Reddit. Or just put it on the Reddit. Or DM us. Yeah. Yeah. Can we, should we talk about my insane DM that, that I received? Please. <laughs> Please. Did you see this today? Yeah. You put it in a WhatsApp group. Yeah. Or, or you didn't react. <laughs> so... In the, this instance, so you're going to force me to react on the podcast. Yeah, I don't, I don't, <laughs> you I decided not to reply to that, so I've decided to raise this <laughs> whilst we're on camera. I thought it was really funny. So someone DM'd me apologising for a rude tweet, and I was like, I, I didn't see your rude tweet, but um, what what was it? What was said? And I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of big of you, like apologising, I guess. And I was like, how bad could it be? <laughs> the tweet said, "Listen, you fat neek." <laughs> Well, so it began. And then that was the main part I want to talk about. I just thought it was very funny to, be, to, then, to, like, to write that and then, then acknowledge it might be rude. We will only accept Q&A submissions if they begin with, listen, you fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. And a comment about how skinny I've got recently. Do you want to sign off on that? 
I don't know. You're the babe respecter around here. Just <laughs> 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 fully signed up. Yeah. You, you know those t-shirts are like, it, that's what we should wear. On Thursday, we were talking about, we were th- talk, brainstorming if we should wear costumes. You know the t-shirts that say FBI, female body inspector. <laughs> that's really funny. We should all wear one of them. I'm sure we could get them. If you can get us an outrageous t-shirt to the Joe office. Do you follow good shirts on Instagram? I think I have seen it. I've got some of their stuff. Really? Yeah. Oh, sick. I've got one that says, I don't care if you're gay, straight, trans, man or a woman, but if you are a fish, I will mercilessly hunt you down and use your flesh to feed my family. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. I wanted to get a hat that said, um, fish fear me or something like that. And my girlfriend was like, no, that's really cringe. I was like, well, it's kind of supposed to be. Yeah, obviously. And she, she was really not on board with it. When I got married, my, uh, one of my pals also bought me one that sort of said, it's like, reasons why I love my wife. <laughs> and it's like one to five. <laughs> what, there's no reasons? No, no, it's like, you know, if you disrespect her, she'll put you in the ground and stuff like that. It's like really, you know, like route one, my wife is like f- fucking terrifying. Oh, I'm scared of my wife content. Yeah. There should be more of that. Just bring that back. There was a re- can't get enough respecting women, can yeah. you? There was a re- <laughs> they should be fucking terrified. I actually, I, I let my I let my girlfriend control my bank account. <laughs> and, and your wife as well. Your wife and your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've not mentioned my wife before. No. I'm, I'm hoping to practice bigamy later on. So, <laughs> aspiring it's bigamist. Neither of them know. <laughs> I'm hoping that they'll consent to this. I haven't told them about it. But I've married the one of them. <laughs> and we've been going out for two years, the other one. I'm going to introduce them to each other. Maybe we'll have a blossoming polyamorous relationship. Oh, I sure hope so. One of my best friends was engaged to a man who she found out had a wife. That's her. My guy. God yeah. grant me the confidence <laughs> to be like, you know what? I'm going to propose to another one. And when we go oh, to geez. the registry office, oh. and when we go to the registry office and they say to her, Madam, it looks like your husband is already married. Oh, no. What could all, go wrong? Oh, fine mess I've got myself into this time. <laughs> this oh, no. self-imposed. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Someone, someone like, checks like the records. I'm so, it seems you're married. Oh. <laughs> you, pro- oh. you proposed to both of them, you fucking rube. <laughs> Stumbling up thousands of pounds for another wedding. What, what was his play? What game was he playing? I do love stuff what? like that. When people are like have other lives and they found out on Facebook or something like that. She, had, like, I mean, she was devastated. Let's just, you know. Let's, yeah, I'm sure she was. We'll park that. It's horrific. Yeah. So what had happened was she got, I'm going to have to keep this really vague. She, kept, she got on the plane to go away, saw this like a strange message and was like, that's totally bizarre to me. When they get to the destination, I'm trying to leave out important details so mm-hmm. that you can't trace it. She went onto his phone and he had a separate messages app that was locked, like Jeez. like with a password on it. Fucking idiot used the same password as like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so went in and there was his wife. That's nuts. Yeah. Do they look the same? They look so similar, actually. Really similar. That is mad. Um, mad. And... She, my friend, told the wife, and the wife kind of knew about it, but like, oh, yeah, which is a bit shit. That's odd. Yeah, but was like pretending it wasn't happening. Well, at least, at least he had one person's permission. No, she was like kind of <laughs> pretending it wasn't happening. It was really sad, actually. Oh, oh no. Um, she was in denial about it. Anyway, so the, the next person she goes out with, like, cheats on her violently, and I was like, "You're asking, like, you must have a magnet. Like, this is mad. This is insane." You know what? That's always what I think. Blame the victim. <laughs> it did sound like you were about to say you're asking for it. And you did stop yourself. But we all heard you say you're asking. <laughs> this is actually your fault. I really hope she doesn't listen to this because she won't. She won't. <laughs> she's too busy. She, being... she clearly has excellent taste, so she's she won't too, be listening. She's to too this. busy. No, she's been a very, a very, very Prince. nice guy now. That's good. Who I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on her. The reason their boyfriends keep cheating on her is because I'm fucking every single one of them. <laughs> 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 
Forget my birthday ones, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so yeah submit your questions for the Q&A <laughs> maybe like not just about this conversation yeah maybe other stuff maybe some politics questions as well politics questions, questions I don't for... think we're going to get any of those I hope we do ask Ed how he votes everyone just ask Ed how he votes yeah I reveal <laughs> Ed reveals how he votes a brilliant independent MP in my local constituency <laughs> that's who I vote for Named <laughs> Nigel Farage. <laughs> <laughs> I vote for Nigel Farage, and I'm able to get me out of here. He got through. He got through eviction last night, didn't he? Did he? Mm. I'm not keeping up with. Yeah, who was it that got fucking knocked out? I should know this. I was there. I was watching. Someone I did not even realize was in oh, I'm a Celebrity. Um, Frankie Dottori. Did not yes. even realize that person was in I'm a Celeb. Yeah, I would have sworn he'd have, he's done it. He screams has already done you I'm a Celebrity. So, yeah, he went. It's just another jockey that's done it. I wonder if the GB News voting block is enough to keep Nigel in there for a while. I think if they're putting all their efforts into keeping him in the jungle, then yeah. The, he's the only contestant with like a channel behind them. Nella Rose has her own YouTube channel behind Yeah, them. but they, they, don't have the cor- they don't have the corporate structure. And or, none of them have been an MP. Not one. Well, Nigel tried, didn't he? Seven times. Famously. Okay. Is that that? I think so. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the Politics Show Bleepcast. We will see you all soon. <laughs>